Hello, today we're going to take a look at getting started with Rad Pivot Grid. So what is Rad Pivot Grid? Rad Pivot Grid is a control used to aggregate millions of records in a concise tabular format. The data can be easily grouped, filtered, sorted, and manipulated to create many different reports. In this video, we're going to see how easy it is to set up a local data provider and bind Rad Pivot Grid to data inside of a predefined class. We'll also discuss how easy it is to set up row, column, aggregate group descriptions, which will allow us to customize the data displayed inside of Rad Pivot Grid. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2012 and get started. So here we are, we're inside of Visual Studio 2012, and I'm just going to go File, New, Project. I'm going to select Telerik in my installed templates, and I'm going to select Windows. And then I'm going to select C Sharp Rad Controls WPF application. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give this the name of Rad Pivot Grid Getting Started and then press the OK button. Now, once I've done that, you'll see the Project Configuration Wizard automatically launch for us. So you'll see many different components listed here. I'm just going to scroll down the page just a little bit. And I'm going to place a check here in Telerik.Windows.Controls.PivotField list. When I place a check in that, you'll see all the dependent references have been added automatically for us. Now, I'll explain the difference later between Rad Pivot Field list and just Pivot, but in this sample, I'm going to go ahead and select Pivot Field list. Now, once that is taken place, if we scroll over here underneath our references, we can look and we can see that Telerik.WindowsControls, Telerik.Pivot.Core, and a couple of other Telerik references have been automatically added here for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that reference pane, and I'm going to go back to the main window.xaml. So if we scroll up just a tad bit here, then we will see that the Telerik XML namespace has already been added for us. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and drop in the pivot grid control where it adds in the XML namespace for us as well as goes ahead and starts setting up our grid here. So I'm going to use the search toolbox. I'm just going to type in rad pivot and we should, that should be enough to see rad pivot grid and I'm going to drag that onto the designer here and we'll notice here that the XML namespace of Pivot has automatically been added for us. So I'm just going to clean that up just a tad bit here. And down at the bottom inside of our grid, you'll see Rad Pivot, Rad Pivot Grid. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the rest of the information that was added automatically for us, where our Pivot Grid just takes up the full space. So the next thing that I'm going to do, just to get us up and running, is I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the main window.xaml.cs and begin adding a little bit of code. So let's go ahead and do that. So from here, uh, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and add in another class here that is just going to be called product. So inside of this product class, I'm going to create a string called name an int with a quantity and then of course we're going to need maybe a price and a date and the process is going to be a double and the date is going to be of date time. So now that I have a product class that's been added I'm going to go ahead and add in some data. So I'm going to create a class called generate pivot data. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that inside of my class here and I'm just going to paste in another code snippet and I'll scroll back up to the top you see we have a private static I list of product, which we defined here, and then just a generate pivot data. So this is going to create a new list of product, and of course my name, my quantity, my price, and the date is going to be set here. So I'm going to give it a name of pen, I'm going to create one for pencil, and then I'm finally going to create one for notebook. And then of course I'm going to go ahead and set the date time, the price, and then the quantity. Now this is a very simple example just for our quick getting started. If you would like to see a more complex example, I would uh, urge you to go ahead and go to our 
tv.telerik.com and check out the video that I've listed here that's called What's New in Q3 2012 RAD Controls for Silverlight and WPF. There, I have about a 17 minute video that uses MVVM that's inside of this if you would like to check that one out. So that's a resource there. You could go to tv.telerik.com and then just simply do a search for it and you should be able to find this video. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and continue where we left off. So from here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch back over again to our main window.xaml and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to auto hide that window where we can see everything a little bit better. Now I'm setting up this project where we're going to be able to um, expand it in the next part of the video. So, so let's begin by coming back to our grid and pasting in another grid. So what we can see here, and we can definitely see it in the designer now, is that we have a grid dot column definitions, and I've set up two column definitions here, and then we have a grid dot row definitions which I've set up with a star and then an auto height. So in this box we're actually going to place our rad pivot grid and over here we're going to add in our rad pivot field list. So this would probably be a great time to explain a little bit about the rad pivot field list. So with using the rad pivot field list your end user is going to be able to modify the rad pivot grid and generate many different reports with the current data. Right now we're just going to actually display some data inside of the rad pivot grid and in the next video we'll use the rad pivot field list to let the user interact with it. Okay so from here the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and set up a couple of window resources. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to type in window.resources and we'll close out of that and I'm just going to begin by providing it a local data source provider. So local data source provider and I'm going to give it a key of local data provider and then from here I'll just close the tag. And we can see down here for our pivot we had a rad pivot grid we gave it a name of pivot we gave it a row span but our data provider was set to the static resource of local data provider so from here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to paste in a snippet and then we'll talk about it briefly so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up row group descriptions and then in this instance is going to be the first one's going to be the word name which came from our class Next we're going to set up column group descriptions which the property name is set to date the step is going to be equal to month. Then we're going to set up aggregate descriptions. So these descriptions will appear and we're going to use property name of price. You can see here we can use things such as string, string format and set it to currency and then we can use aggregate functions to maybe display the average. And then finally we're going to display inside of this aggregate description a property name of quantity. So we almost have everything wired up. We have our windows.resources, we've scrolled down, we've added our private grid, and we've set a data provider to a local data provider. We only need to add one more line of code which will be in our c -sharp main window .xaml.cs and that code is just going to set the resources of local data provider. It's going to cast it as our Telerix local data source provider. The item source will be equal to generate pivot data. So let me go ahead and paste that in so you can see it. So there's the local data provider. I need to fix my namespace here to use Telerik.pivot.data providers. So that should clear up there. Dot item source equals generate pivot data. So I believe we have everything in place now. So we should be able to go ahead and run the application. And once the application runs, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this window a little bit. And you can see from here, 
of course I'm using a lower resolution so you can uh, see this demo a little bit easier but over here we're going to add the pivot field list in the next video so you can see we have January through December we have the notebook we have the average of price so of course you can hover over these items and get a little more detailed information of each one of them and then we have the grand totals so we have a grand total of the average of price for notebooks the sum of quantity pen and pencil and then down here at the bottom we have the aver total average of the price and then the total sum of the quantity. So this is the first of three videos. We're going to expand upon this in the next video. So I hope you stick around for the other two parts of the video series. So please again, thank you for watching and tune in to tv.telleric.com for more videos and check out blogs.telleric.com for the latest news and announcements. This is Michael Crump. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.